Hey, it's me again. Welcome back to another rap video. We're continuing on to look at Philippians chapter 1 and this week we're doing verses 21 to 26. Hopefully you remember last week we were looking at what is Paul's main aim in life and we saw in the earlier verses that his main aim is that Jesus is exalted, that he is glorified, that he is made to look as good as he is no matter what happens to Paul. This week we're going to see how, like, where does the rubber hit the road with that? Where does that make a difference in our lives? And the big thing Paul shows us in these verses is that it helps us make decisions. So I don't know what decisions you may have had to make recently um, where you have had to make a choice and choose between things. What is it that's influenced that choice? Maybe it's what will be the best for you? What will be the easiest thing to do? What will you have most fun? There are lots of things that we can choose, but our passage today helps us think how we have to make decisions. And it really plays into the big theme of what Philippians is telling us with the whole book. So let me read these verses now and then we'll talk briefly and then we'll have some questions for you. So Philippians chapter 1 verses 21 to 26. For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labour for me. Yet what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. But it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith. So that through my being with you again, your boasting in Christ Jesus will abound on account of me. So there we see in this little section, Paul has a decision to make. He has two choices and he's got to pick one. So what are the two choices? Well, on one hand, this is building off of verse 21, which we looked at a bit last week. So to live is Christ and to die is gain. There's two potential options before him. The first is that he would live. The second is that he would die. These are the two things that might happen to him. So what? let's look at what happens if he, if he were to die. What would that be like for him? Well, we see in verse 21 that it's gain. And then we see in the second half of verse 23 that if he departs and is with Christ, it's much better by far. The struggle and the pain of this world will be over for Paul and he will be exactly where he wants to be with Jesus Christ in heaven. There's nothing better than that on earth. That is the, the one thing Paul has lived his entire life for is that he might end up there and that those who teach us might end up there too. He says it's better by far. And then his other option is life. We see that if he were to stay alive, that would mean fruitful labour for him. It would mean hard work. But he does know that it's more necessary for the Philippians that Paul stays alive. He knows that they need him to help them live more for Christ and to understand the mystery that Jesus, the mystery of the gospel more. So those are, those are his options. What's he going to decide? Is it Will it be better for him to die and be with Christ or will it be better for him to live and continue struggling and working for the gospel? Well, what this whole section is, is, is actually it's a worked example of verses 9 to 10 earlier in the chapter. That's where he, one of the parts that he prayed for other people. He prayed that their love would abound in knowledge and depth of insight and that they'd be able to discern what is best. So this is it. This is the example. What Paul has a decision to make. How is he going to decide what is best? Well, verse 25, he's convinced that because it is necessary for them, he will remain. He will continue with all of the Philippians. He realises that it's better for Jesus and the gospel that he stays so he can teach others than for him to die then and there. It plays into that main aim that Paul has we spoke about last week. Everything Paul does is shaped by what would glorify Jesus more. In this case, it's that he continues to struggle and work in this life. We also see that he will continue, not just for Jesus and the gospel, but for the Philippians themselves. He will continue with all of you for your progress and joy. He continues so that they'd be able to boast in Jesus more because of what he's taught them. 
our lives should be lived the same way. The decisions we make in our life should be decided the same way as the way Paul does. Paul gave up the greatest thing that would have happened. If he had died, he would have been lived with Jesus. There is nothing more appealing or better for a Christian. But he was willing to give that up for other people. One of the big things in the whole letter of the Philippians is living humbly and for others and servant minded. And this is the greatest example Paul has. He chose to keep living and working and struggling for the Philippians and for Jesus than to live life uh, to go to Christ now. So that's how Paul makes decisions. There will be a few questions come up now that will hopefully help us think, where do we have to make these decisions? Where can we have that? Where does the main aim of Jesus Christ being glorified affect our lives and our thoughts? Let me pray to close. Father, thank you for the letter from Paul to the Philippians. Thank you that we can use that as an example and it can teach us how we need to make decisions. Father, I ask that you would make in all of our lives the main aim and goal, Jesus being glorified and that everything we do, every decision we make may be influenced by that goal and that aim. Help us love one another more and help our decisions be made not for what is best for us, but what, for what is best for others and what is best for the gospel. Give us confidence and hope in that, that we might live for it forever, glorifying Jesus. In your holy name, amen. That's a wrap.